Brought to you by Almond Auctions, the worldwide leader in antique tractor auctions. Farm roots run deep in the hills of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Maybe that's why more than 60 years ago, the Rough and Tumble Engineers Historical Association was founded here. Our whole organization here at Rough and Tumble is around preserving agriculture, equipment, and history. We have a reunion once a year called a Thrasherman's Reunion, and that draws in many people from all around the world. A longtime Rough and Tumble member, Louis France, grew up with John Deere tractors and still has green machines today, but he knows plenty about Rough and Tumble. It pretty well describes what it's like to ride on his brick tractor, built more than 80 years ago, right here in the Keystone States. A uh, Frick uh, company that built the tractors is in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Here's the Frick, original Frick serial number plate, which tells you it's a 1528 serial number 1494. Frick wasn't ashamed to advertise their, their uh, name on their tractor. They had it in numerous places. It's on, here on the radiator. And by the way, this is a cross-mounted radiator. Uh, fan right here in back of the radiator pulls the air through this way. Uh, it has a decal also on uh, each side. And by the way, these weren't decals back in those days, and this isn't either. This is uh, painted on. Uh, they didn't know what decals were back in, in the 1920s, I guess. Before the Frick tractor came along, the company built steam engines. So it's no wonder the Frick tractor was mostly suited to do the work the old steamers once did. Around here, probably just for thrashing and belt work, which thrashing is belt work, and uh, probably a sawmill. I doubt if they used it too much in the farm because around here, the farmers were using horses. So there wasn't a need for a tractor. They, didn't, they really didn't believe in a tractor for uh, uh, working the fields and plowing and stuff. One of the interesting things that they'd done for belt work was they had these two slots where they had rollers that stuck up and they would tighten them up and adjust them so that the belt would stay on this pulley while they were thrashing. One of the hardest things to do is build a belt up that's 50, 75, or 100 feet long and get everything to run true. And that was one way they did it with these these uh, roller guides. Though the Frick wouldn't handle much in the way of field work, it still offered plenty of unique features, starting with the sideways engine. I like the way the engine runs. Nice smooth engine. Don't miss a beat. Well, the Beaver engine sits crossways on the frame. Uh, which was easy for gearing. It didn't have to have a rear differential like you do in a, a line tractor, line motor tractor. And uh, it uh, worked very well at that time. And it was a little cost saving that way too. They made two sizes. They made 12, 24, and a, a 15, uh, 28. And that's, this here's the larger one. It has two gears, one reverse. So you don't have much choice. Some say it's slow and slower. Two forward gears and two choices when you drive the Frick, either sitting or standing. I had a seat here on the platform along with where the toolbox was. And back in those days, it seems a lot of tractors had platforms and you'd done most of your work standing up. It gave you a little bit more flexibility. You could move around and stuff. A big driving platform makes room for the occasional rider, too. So Louie can take his daughter, Luann, and her little dog, Rufus, out for a spin. Far from fancy, the Frick is a rugged machine made from thick channel iron. And what about those steel wheels? OK, the wheels are uh, about six feet tall. And as you see here, the gearing that drives these wheels is very large, too. You can see the big teeth here. That's called your bull gear. That's the biggest gear on this whole tractor. And down here is the hubcap. A lot of times you think of a hubcap as on a car, but uh, that's also the hubcap on a tractor. You find it on the front wheels as well as the back wheels. 
front wheels measure four feet high. So they're quite, quite tall and four inches wide. Maybe the most unique thing about this tractor is the way Louie was able to buy it. Seems the fellow who had the frick couldn't get the engine going, so he got fed up. And... So the funny thing is, I got it home and I started tearing it down, which no one ever uh, did that was trying to help him. They were telling him, put a little uh, WD-40 in or whatever, and that'll loosen it up. Here I found a squirrel had made a nest in the, in the uh, uh, manifold. There was just a small piece of the manifold broke out on the one end, on the exhaust. Seems that squirrel was nuts about this tractor. And now Louie is too. Way back in 1928, the Frick Company stopped building tractors and got into the refrigeration business. It's a good thing they squeezed this Frick in. So Louie and everyone else can enjoy it today. I'm just happy that I have it. Uh, I like to, uh, uh, the honor of having it because it's so rare. I've never, I myself have never seen one come up at auction, but I hear them coming up at auction occasionally, but it's, it's not very often at all. It's a, it's a classic by itself. It, you go pretty far to find another one like it.